This is Barry Zelma, Zelma on Insurance. I'm an attorney who has retired from the practice of law and now spend my time as an insurance claims consultant and expert witness and author and producer of these videos. Today, I'd like to talk about the red flags of fraud. These are devices used by and sometimes required by insurers and insurance regulators to assist insurers and their claim staff in recognizing potential fraud. Red flags are only indicators of fraud. They are not evidence of fraud. They are not proof of fraud. They are tools to help the claims handlers identify potential fraud for further investigation by private investigators, lawyers, and or the special investigative units required by state law. When more than three substantial red flags appear in a claims investigation, that claim should be referred to the special investigative unit that is maintained by the insurer for further investigation. Some of the red flags are related to particular types of insurance claims. Consider the property insurance fraud red flags can include a fire started in a bed, a fire in a place where there is no natural source of ignition available, such as in the middle of a kitchen tiled floor, or in a bathroom tiled floor, or in a shower or closet where there's just no ignition sites, a burglary where easily sold items are left and extremely valuable unique and difficult to sell items are taken. A burglary where clothing is stolen because there's so little market for used clothing, especially if the insured is a 42 short or a 56 portly. There's just no market. Why would it be stolen? A fire where there is no source of ignition available. An insured who has receipts for every item claimed loss. An insured who has no invoices or receipts. The insured who has only xerographic copies of receipts. The insured who provides receipts with incorrect or no sales tax figures. The insured who provides receipts from the same supplier with sequence numbers in reverse order of the purchase date. A loss shortly after the issuance of the policy. A loss on a policy that is the insured's first insurance. A loss on a policy that is about to expire. The loss is to the total contents of the business or home, including items of little or no value. The loss includes family heirlooms. The loss leaves untouched family heirlooms. Items of significant value recently acquired or lost. A claim for property of a value that is abo above and beyond the apparent means of the insured. For instance, in one case I had where a house in Cerritos, California, a small suburb, claimed the loss of a Rembrandt and a Picasso painting, even though his house had been foreclosed for non-payment of mortgage due business telephone number that is connected only to an answering machine or answering service. A claimant who started employment shortly before the accident occurred or is recently self-employed. 
Then there are red flags of fraud at a time a policy is acquired, where the insured seeks to increase limits inordinately. I once had a case where it insured doubled the amount of insurance on a piece of property shortly before it was destroyed in an arson fire, thinking wrongfully, of course, that the insurer was obligated to pay whatever the policy limit stated. The insured prefers to come to the broker rather than having the broker visit with the insured. The insured asks the broker not to visit the insured location. The insured lowers the statement of gross earnings when he learns it is the basis of premium. The insured lowers the square footage of a commercial building when he learns it is a basis of the premium. The insured insists on reading the policy wording before agreeing to coverage. In one case I had many years ago, an insured did just that until he found a policy that was written with almost no limitations and no exclusions. The insured is not concerned about the amount of premium. All of these red flags would require additional investigation by the insurer or its SIU. Red flags of fraud associated with the insured would include an insured who is overly pushy for a quick settlement, an insured who is unusually knowledgeable with regard to insurance terminology and the claim settlement process, an insured who handles all business in person, thus avoiding the use of the mails and potential prosecution of federal mail fraud statutes, but uses telephone or email and forgets that there is such a thing as a federal wire fraud statute, an insured who is in financial difficulty, a loss shortly after the limits of the policy are increased, the insured is exceedingly cooperative and undemanding. Note that some of these red flags seem to be contradictory, and that's because they're nothing but indicators. They are not evidence. They require further investigation. Some red flags of personal injury fraud include a claimant or insured who is excessively eager for a quick, even reduced settlement, or an insured who is eager to accept blame for an accident. In my experience, most insurers refuse to state that it's their fault until the evidence becomes overwhelming. And so I am always suspicious of an insured who wishes to take fault. Red flags of fraud dealing with premium include the payment of premium in cash and in full especially when it comes from a minimum wage earner. A minimum down payment plus a finance contract or direct bill program, or an insured who does not care what price is quoted. Then there are red flags of fraud that apply to vehicles where the applicant's income is not compatible with the insured vehicle. For instance, a nanny who lives in with three children and is paid slightly more than minimum wage, but owns and insures a Bentley automobile. Or a high value vehicle like a Bentley or a Rolls Royce or a Maserati with no lien holder. Or a vehicle with a salvage title or a named insured who is inconsistent with the vehicle, such as an 88-year-old woman with a late model Corvette, or a 40-year-old medical doctor with a 1973 Pinto as the only household car. Then there are red flags of fraud that 
apply only to a person's occupation, such as an unemployed insured, especially when a full policy or large down payment was made in cash, or an occupation inconsistent with items being insured, such as a person who works at McDonald's as counter help but drives a new Mercedes-Benz, or works at Bing Burger King as counter help and insures antiques that are highly valuable, or a self-employed person in a transient occupation such as roofing or asphalt. Then there are red flags that come from the insured or the claimant's personal demeanor, such as an applicant who never shows himself in person, or an applicant that does not sign the application in view of the agent, or the applicant who works through a third party, or an applicant who returns an unsigned application, an applicant who avoids the use of the U.S. mails, an applicant that asks many questions about the claims process, an applicant with unusual familiarity with coverages, terms, procedures, an applicant brought to the office by a helper or an interpreter, an applicant who to the insurance agency is just too slick, an applicant who dresses in gang style, an applicant with tattoos of affiliation with certain local gangs, an applicant wearing flashy jewelry, gold, and gemstones, an applicant who arrives in a borrowed late model car to buy insurance on an own 2020 Lincoln, Then there are red flags of fraud for walk-in business to an insurance agency where the applicant has no particular reason he chose that agent's office, or the applicant does not work or live near the agent's office, the applicant did not phone first for an appointment, the applicant was not referred by an existing customer, the applicant cannot recall his previous insurer. Then there are red flags of fraud dealing with the timing of the visit, such as the applicant appears just about noon when the agency is short-staffed and out to lunch, or when the applicant comes in minutes before closing. There are red flags dealing with identification where the ID card is newly issued or the middle name is only an initial or on social security card or a driver's license or where the insured shows a plastic social security card or a social security card is irregular where the insured applicant has out-of-state driver's licenses and no physical ID. What do you do when red flags appear? If the investigation establishes more than three red flags of fraud, the insurance investigator must prepare a report and request the services of the insurer's SIU and the SIU can then conduct a thorough investigation of the potential fraud. The adjuster should also advise the insured or claimant that the additional investigation is required with a detailed explanation in compliance with the fair claims practices regulations and advise the insured that the investigation has been referred to Mr. John Smith or Mrs. Jane uh, Wallace without identifying the person as an SIU investigator. This video was adapted from my book, California SIU Regulations 2020, and is available as both a Kindle book and as a paperback 
from Amazon.com and from my website, Zalma.com, by clicking on the link to the Insurance Claims Library. If you found this video to be interesting or of use to you, please refer it to your colleagues. It's free. And please also subscribe to my YouTube channel, my Rumble channel, and my blog so that you can be advised of future blog posts and videos. Thank you for your attention.